talk at the same time. Talk, talk, talk. Talk, hello. talk, talk to hello. uh hello, oh, I told hello, you about hello, that. Hello. Why? Why? Why are you gonna <laughs> say talk? How dare you? <laughs> hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Get to Know interview. This time it's part two, although you don't have to watch part one to watch this video if you happen to just come across this. Today we are going to be talking about Cyan. And last time we got to know who Cyan was as a person. That's what the point of these interviews is to get to know the people behind the content that you watch on YouTube. But Cyan is so passionate within the Fortnite storyline that Today, that's what I wanted to talk about, his relationship with the Fortnite storyline, what inspired his content, things like that. It's going to be more focused on Cyan and the Fortnite storyline. So if you're interested in any of that, this video is going to be great for you. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another video. If you are new here, my name is Kyle. I am your guy with too many YouTube channels. Let's go over and talk to Cyan. Cyan, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so, so much for coming. The Professor Lore has arrived once again in this place to cook <laughs> and teach you guys and make you believe in the five realities. That's my main point. But yes, I'm here. Say so, hi. Hello, hello, Professor Lore. It's so good to see Thank you. you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank so you. I want to dive right into this, talking about your relationship with the Fortnite storyline. How did you initially get into the Fortnite storyline? When did you first notice it? When did you first get hooked? Well, it is a... If, like, there is a lot of, like, details to it, so I'm gonna go through. First of all, probably, like, all of us, people, like, who started from the beginning of the game. I started from, like, Chapter 1, Season 2, playing this game. And I think everybody who played from that time noticed the storyline right exactly when, like, the... What was it? The Rocket Launch mm -hmm. live event happened. Like, right when that happened, people were like, whoo! interesting this game it's not just a br there is some like weird things into it so kind of right at that moment like before that i was not that into fortnite i was like you just die once and then you have to respawn most of the game is just loading rather than playing the game i like call of duty more but then i saw that live event in that season i was like that's crazy that <laughs> i have never seen that in any other game that's kind of cool so right at that moment, I kind of had some, like, in my mind, I was like, this game has some potential. I don't think it's just going to be another random game. It might become something extremely cool, especially story-wise. Mm -hmm. So that was just the start. That was just hope. And then season five happened, which I would say was a pretty strong story season because of the cube. The cube was like... Oh, yeah. The cube just exploded the game, if you remember. Do you remember how popular it was? Oh when my it just god, came? dude. It was it was crazy. It blew up the world. Yeah, it was insane. I miss those days. Dude, like... You know what? You know what? I wasn't yeah. gonna talk about this, but I'm gonna get into it. I always say that the reason that we don't have those moments anymore is because of Fortnite leaks. Kevin oh, was a surprise. Oh, for sure. Dude, oh definitely. My god. Sorry. I, but... I apologize. Any anybody watching us, I forgot to turn off my text message notification, so you guys just heard that. And sorry, Cyan. What were you saying? <laughs> I was saying like that's uh that's facts, but sadly it's like every game is going through that right now. Even Call of Duty Zombies, it used to be like when a new map comes, everything about it is a secret. You have to explore the map and find the secrets for yourself. But now the leakers just go through the new maps, find everything, put all of the secrets just like on Twitter, and there you go. Solved because of like leaks. It drives me so crazy. That's, yeah, that's a really sad truth that like all the games are suffering from right now. And I really wish Epic could find a way to lower the leaks, but I don't know how exactly they could. It's well, really hard. I keep meaning to make a video on this, and this isn't an original idea. I've seen it thrown around a few times because Epic Games can literally put in the code for leakers like, hey, if you – I don't know what the right terms to use is, but like if you decrypt this, then we can pursue legal action, something like that. Like these are okay to leak. You can talk about these, whatever you want. But once we get into like, hey, this I giant can't. cube might be spawning back on the island – then don't touch this or there's going to be issues. I think it's that simple, to be honest. I honestly, I also thought like, uh, why don't they do something like that? That's actually pretty smart. I agree with that. That was yeah, just I, like, I can't let take the credit skins for it. be leaked. <laughs> Those things are like live events and stuff. Smack them. Throw them in the sticks reality. Send them to me. I will beat them. <laughs> Anyone who licks those, send them to me. And if they ever end up actually doing this, they're obviously going to have to make an example out of somebody, right? So I already yeah. see it right now. Everybody going, oh my god, that poor leaker. Epic Games is so evil. And it's oh like clearly god, says that... in the code right here, hey, do not leak this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, that poor leaker. They sent him to Sasa. I just go pow, pow, pow and they just throw him into the sixth reality, forgotten with Dunno Mustard and I don't know. 
the what was it what was it the hit scan the so, hit scan all of them just forgot him so you want to punish this guy by sending him to meet the goat of fortnite donald mustard um I mean, I mean, it is the forgotten reality, but you do get to meet <laughs> Dunno Mustard. It has, you... it has wins, it has sadness. We did get a tad off track there. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to say about, like, first getting into the storyline before we continue? Oh, yeah. For sure. So that was, like, when I just got into really enjoying the storyline. Then Season 7 happened. That's when it got char character narrative rather than just, like, this happened, this happened, that happened. Ice King was pretty cool. Ice King, these like polar thing, melting everything. That was sick. That was awesome. They handled the story really well. It was amazing. The secrets in his castle. That part was something that like started to really get me into this story. This is an eight happened. The bunker. You like the alien type of bunker. Again, extremely cool secret, the design and everything. Season nine. Season nine was pretty awesome, but like uh I don't think that season like really uh changed my mind on the story made me love it even more what? season x did that season so, i mean like with the, with the loading screen with bunker jonesy that whole season that was oh one no of the best that was you... awesome but i mean like it didn't that was not the season that made me fall in love with the story oh, i was still like okay, enjoying okay, okay. it sorry it was yeah, not the, yeah it was not the season that completely grabbed me catch me to be like i want to follow everything about this game it was still pretty awesome but when that happened it slowly started to happen from season X because season X had like voice lines. We finally got one of the coolest parts of this game story. The scientists, the seven things about them. We got more things about the government, which turned out to be the Imagine Order. We had all of the <laughs> cool, like the end event. The end event broke the internet from how cool it was. Like, I still think that was the best event. Uh, in terms of like culture wise and things definitely oh the yeah impact that that event had nothing else had yeah it, was it wasn't insane. like structurally the best event or anything but i still to this yeah. day like nothing fortnite has ever done or nothing actually like in any video game ever has been that big in my opinion like definitely, it was like saying goodbye sure. to that first chapter one map they did it so good the music is peak absolutely yeah, the peak. music and the, the best part about that event is it showed how daring Epic is to create art, not just like slop put together for like the recent Call of Duties. <laughs> they made the game shut down for two days. Just look at the black hole. No game would ever do that. But Donna Mustard was like, you know what? I want to cook. I want to <laughs> just do something artistic. That's when I was like, okay. This game, its story, it's way too unique. There is genuinely nothing else out there like it. So Season X was when I was starting to be like, I want to follow this game's story forever. But that was not when it completely catched me. There was another season that did that. You maybe probably know which one it is. Do you? If I had yes. to guess, I'm, I, dude, I know we've talked about it before, but it's escaping my memory. But if I had to guess, it's Chapter 2, Season 2. Of course, yes, Midas, sir. What do you expect? <laughs> oh my God, peak perfection! I I love that season. Season one, story wise, was kind of garbage. I didn't like it at all. The story was really random. They didn't explain it well. The loading screens are cool, but they don't tell like enough. They don't tell a story. They just show it, and showing the story is good. But you also need to know some things on the side too. That season didn't really say anything, so you were just lost. But then season two began. Oh my god. All of the Battle Pass characters had their own intro. All of them were connected. The ghost and shadow idea of fighting each other. The fake fight starting with like the mastermind Midas. Midas just being the leader of both of the factions. Just so cool. And then Midas himself. The design of him. How like mysterious he is. How like secretful. They cooked. They did they, a really, really good job with that season. It is, to this day, my favorite Fortnite storyline. Yeah, it, my favorite is, like, three other seasons, but this is up there. This okay, is 100%. Well, don't don't answer that, because that's actually a specific question I wanted to ask you towards yeah. the end of this. But anyways, continue. Sure. Okay, so yeah, this season 2, Chapter 2, was exactly when I was like, okay, this game's story is, mwah, is, is like a masterpiece. <laughs> if Chess, Chef Kiss... What am I saying? It's <laughs> Chef Kiss. I hope I said that right. So, chef yeah. Kiss. And, yeah. Exactly. Nice. Good job. <laughs> Professor Lore is proud of you. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, that season is, it was such a masterpiece. They did this pie theme 
probably as best as you could ever do it. And the spy theme is such a cool theme and they just, just went out with it. They did as like everything they could to make you feel like you're actually in like a spy movie. They cooked. It was amazing. And the live event, the first live event that the character talks in front of you. Another reason to make people like this game story keeps evolving more yeah. and more. It just... We started from nothing, no voice signs, no, like, anything. Everything was mysterious. It kept building up more and more and more. Everything just kept getting more wild, which is exactly why Donna Master's storytelling worked so well. Starting from nothing, and every time adding something into it to make it feel more impactful, it just felt amazing. It felt like the game is growing up with you. It was awesome. Absolutely. And so going to, going to season three, God. Don't remind me. There was no story that season. That's probably my most hated season story-wise. There was I, nothing. I actually didn't mind the idea, and I can't... The name's escaping me of it, which is probably why the storyline kind of sucked, because I can't remember the name of it. But those astronauts, yeah. they had potential. You know what I'm talking they about? They were cool. They had yeah, those, yeah, like, yeah. They... the challenges. You had that, like, little event that took place. That was pretty cool. The visuals on it, the astronauts, the ship. That was cool, but, but uh, it didn't go into it. <laughs> yeah, of course, so, yeah, that's like, like all they had, right? <laughs> yeah, that was that. The only cool part about the storyline was like finally getting to see Jules, but they didn't really explain anything about her. And then the other thing was the Marvel comics. But I count that as the Marvel season. I don't really count that as season three. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, yeah no, I get that. It's a teaser. They did it for them, yeah. But the... But it was a probably one of the best teasers they have ever done. I was, was disappointed awesome. they didn't do that again. Me too. Yeah, all of my community was the same. They were like, why didn't they do the comics again? That was sad. But they did the animation though. Do you know the one with the last update? The Day of Doom animation. That was dope. Which animation? The comic-like animation they did for the story. For the new game mode. Day of Am Doom. I stupid? I don't you forgot they... it? Let me see if I can send you real quick. Let yeah, me see, I don't. Let me see. I don't recall what that was. I was thinking you were thinking like the cutscene, the cutscene teaser for the new mini event that we got. No, nah, not know. that one. I have it on my lap. Oh, I don't have it on my laptop. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> that's okay. You can't just search right now when I'm talking. You can't just search right now. So, right. and that season four came. Season four was not really about Fortnite's. It was about Fortnite's own story, but it was completely focused on Marvel characters. But that's fine because till that moment. We didn't really have character focus in Fortnite yet. We had more like visual storytelling. So it was just a perfect time to do a collab season before like you make your own characters. It was just an amazing time for that collab. And the story they told with it, he was pretty awesome. I mean, you can't tell. The live event of that season still has the record of the most watched live event ever. So you can probably tell how amazing it was. Did they break this it? This is a... I don't think so. I think that still holds the record. Oh, never mind then. Yeah, that, that live event was insanely popular because they did a banger job with it. Like, it was so good. Um, hold on just a second. Don't you mean Epic Games is just putting out slop as usual? Oh, that's just chapter five. Oh, my God. Except this season. Except all this season. Oh my god, this season. Why is it so good? Why is it so good? <laughs> I actually, Why? I'm not, I'm not hyped up about this season like everybody else is. Oh, I really like the story, how they're handling it, but I don't know. Oh, it, yeah, just, it just had some chapter five issues, but it's not about me and how I'm enjoying yeah. the game. You I've, continue I, on. I, I've said that too. Yeah, it's like all of the issues of this season is just because it's in chapter five. If this yes. season was in chapter four, oh my God. Imagine, imagine the gameplay. Get some Marvel augments. That would have been so good. Yeah, exactly. I that would have been it. amazing. Like, I don't like the medallions. The augments were way better. Oh, I so agree on that. 100%. Yeah. So, so it, go ahead. Oh, and then season five came. Season five was pretty awesome because we got to learn about John Jones. And John Jones was the first character in Fortnite that actually got character development. It actually had like personalities. We watched him to go crazy. He was doing his best. He got betrayed by the Imagine Order. He felt horrible. That was like, that was when Fortnite started feeling like a movie. The cuts um, in that season. Well, hold on had. for just a second there. What Don't do you, you mean, mean um, Ad Night that season? Where is my gun? Where, where is my gun? <laughs> hey, Who hey, said that? Hey, I know where you live, sir. We can't have those. <laughs> oh, that's true. Where is my <laughs> knife? I can't even have a knife. What can you have in Canada? No. What? Hey, you know Where's what? I can come stick? over there right now. There's nothing you can do about it. You have to let me in. 
I have a stick. The stick is out of the five realities. It will hurt really bad. It hurts really bad. You'll have to send me to another dimension so I can't like sue you. Yeah. Oh god. Oh my god. You can't do nothing in this place. No. <laughs> it's okay. I'll go hang out with Dr. Sloan. Send me one of the realities. I'll bring. Oh, I'll bring her back I to the storyline. I want to go there actually. No. <laughs> no, you can't mine. come. You can't you? come. No. No. Uh, I get to hang out with I'm Dr. Sin- Sloan. No, you get to hang out was- with like I don't know, like Guff. You can hang out with Guff. I will send you to the Claw Clint's uh, reality. <laughs> Sloan is mine. Ew, okay. I don't want to be part of that reality. He's bought and sold by Epic Games. Oh my god. He, it's just filled <laughs> with boxes. That reality is like <laughs> everything is boxes. Dude, could you imagine just being dropped there and it's just like a million boxes? You have to find him. You have to open the box. He's stuck in a box. <laughs> open the box. Where is Clark? Where are you, Clark? That would be and, awesome. And like, it's just noise suppressed too, so you can't even hear him. You have to look for a box that's like maybe shaking a little yeah, it's bit. Just, you, you just hear a tiny bit of mumbling, like, mm-mm. That would be awesome. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's get back to the storyline. Yeah. And then season seven happened. That's that's when the story went no no sorry six six six. That's when the story went like overdrive, as Donna said himself back then too. That's when like the story was like, you know what? I just wanna go wild. I wanna tell just go crazy. Left, right, story, up, down. Like, <laughs> do you remember the intro of that season? Yes, it was so good. I loved it. Probably still the best moment in the story, I would say. The sacrifice Ooh. of the foundation. Such a good intro to the character. I don't know, man. There so were so good. many great moments in Fortnite storyline. I, I don't know what I could put at the top. You know what, actually? Yeah. Oh, I just thought yeah. about that. That makes for a good tier list video. Like, specific moments within the Fortnite storyline. Yeah, that would be awesome. I did one ranking, like, my favorite Donald Mustard storylines, but not, like, favorite moments. Like, the foundation being the foundation being revealed as the rock would be in, like, F tier for me. But would be the foundation. dare you? That what? was awesome. It was funny, but I think it just hurts the character a little bit. I I mean, he is not The Rock. The Rock is just the actor. And, like, I know. The... I tried to rationalize it like that, but I can't. I can't do it. I look at it like, as... Think about, like, think about it as Johnny Silverhand in... What was it called? The Cyberpunk is played by Keanu Reeves, but it's Johnny Silverhand, not Keanu. It's like... <sighs> I don't know. I can't put myself into it. Do you hate The Rock? Oh, I don't hate The Rock at all. I think The Rock's a cool guy. Then why? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I, I, you can have my favorite actor in the world and put him in there and I still wouldn't like it. I want the foundation to be a Fortnite original character. I mean, I'm fine with it because to me, it's like if the guy does a good job with the character, if his face actually fits, then I'm like, why not? And his egg face, it actually kind of fits. <laughs> I kind of like it. It's like, you, like... You, look at, you look at it, you want to cook it. <laughs> I swear. Do you like Brie Larson as a paradigm? I At the start, I was like, I'm not sure, but I think they designed her really well, especially her hair and everything. And her voice also fits really well to me, at least. I think yeah, I they so. did well with her. It's I like, just don't like if... the main characters of Fortnite being collabs. That's when I think collabs have gone too far. I don't see it as collabs, but sure, if you want. I get what to you mean. To me, it's like, because like even like uh, The Rock was uh, kind of like a uh, friends with Dono Mustard. So I really feel like Dono was like... The actors that he's friends with, he was like, do you want to play my character? And they were like, sure, why not? I really think that's how it went. It's always possible. Yeah. And then, like, that season, the intro of the foundation was the amazing, because so amazing, because, like, he showed off the powers he had really well, how strong he is, the entrance coming out of the meteor, so powerful. And then... The way he didn't, like, waste any words. He only talked, like, important things. It made you feel like he's definitely someone who, like, takes everything really seriously. As Foundation is meant to be as a character. Because he's kind of, like, an extremely serious guy. Which is exactly why the Seven kind of have problems with him. And then, the way he had to sacrifice himself to save everyone. Not knowing that he would even survive. That's how you cook up a good villain. Special. No, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hero. He's not a villain. Sorry. No. <laughs> yeah. That's how you cook up a really good hero. The problem that Paradigm had, Paradigm's intro felt feared. Especially like you just see her face without a mask, without it being like a really big like reveal, just like the foundation. That was one of the reasons like Paradigm's intro felt way worse than the foundation. But I get why it happened. Uh, mm. Donald Mustard wasn't there to cook up. Sally. <laughs> he was under the kitchen. And then season eight happened. A seven and eight, both of them. <laughs> oh my god. Some of the greatest Fortnite storylines of all time. And gameplay, both of them. Oh yeah. Some of the best seasons ever. Agreed. God, those were insane. 
That was probably when I was like, I want to become Professor Lore. Oof. Seven and eight. That's when I was like, it's time. The time has come. <laughs> oh but my God. I need to shine. And I actually saw something about that. I was one of the first people to predict that chapter three is going to come at the end of season eight. I was like, in season six, chapter two, I was like that season seven is going to be part one. Season two is going to be part two of the aliens. And then after that, chapter three comes. And it actually happened. That's pretty cool. That is cool. I like that. And if for any viewer over there, Sorry to put a pause on you, Cyan. For any viewer over there, just watch oh. me like shake my head or something. It wasn't at Cyan. Somebody let a bug in my house and it just flew by. Dude, I hate bugs. <laughs> it probably, it. dude. It probably looked like I was like, "What's this dude talking about? <laughs> Why is this dude yapping about? What is the Fort <laughs> Fortnite has a storyline since when?" <laughs> I'm gonna blame my little puppy that's behind me over there because. Doggo. Oh, she's sleeping right now. Super cute. She's. But nah, she's, nah, been, she's, she's been on off the balcony today. Cause is it is it cold where you guys are yet? It's getting cold. Yeah, it's starting. Yeah, to that's get where cold. it is. So the dog's been spending some time outside. So probably let some bugs in. <laughs> the dog is like, I mean, I'm like dreaming of the things that Saeed is saying. I'm dreaming of the five realities. <laughs> I'm dreaming of Doctor Stone. Wow. What would you do if my dog hated you? Uh, I would send her to the sixth reality. You would not. <laughs> I would do it. I would fight. You're, you're going to be asleep. I come to your house. I grab her, throw in the portal into the rift. The portal? Like, you have to throw me in too. Oh, I've got to do that too. Sure. I'm going to throw you. Be like, how dare you hate on the five realities? And I'm going to go find Clark. I'm going to do the same. Like, but how dare you hate on the five realities? I get, to, I get to go meet Clark then? Yep. And all I have to do is let Sia and have my, my wife become a single mother by taking me away. I'm gonna throw the wife too. Well, no worry. I'm gonna <laughs> yeah, throw everyone. What about my kid? I'm gonna throw the kid too. Don't worry. <laughs> right. Everybody goes. So it's Everybody my family goes. and Clark. Yeah. You All guys right, are perfect. just a little. And Donald Mustard. Don't forget. Oh, Donald, Donald Mustard too? Perfect. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. He's, He's gonna kid. be like, so did the side guy send you here? Nice. Nice. He sends a lot of people here. Donald Mustard's going to be freaking out. He's like, what happened? <laughs> or what, imagine, happened? No. what would you do if Cy what would you do if we got there and that Donald Mustard was just like, Cyan, I hate that guy. <laughs> I would double send him to the sixth reality. I would I would grab him, I will send him to the twelfth reality. Double legs. <laughs> Alright, well perfect, perfect. Speaking of the twelfth reality, let's continue on with the Fortnite storyline. Yes. And then chapter three season two happened. We all know, best season in the storyline by far. It was just a dream come true for all of the story lovers. The Seven, where's the Imagine Order? The Origin, such a cool character. And the Imagine. Which I really hope. Yeah, the Imagine was amazing too. The Order, she didn't really get any love with Socks. Hopefully <laughs> they give her. Wait, with Socks? No, with Socks. I mean, like, she deserved uh, love. They definitely need to give her some love. Poor girl. Oh, yeah. Oh, and, uh, she just got torn apart, if that counts. She could be in love with death. Oh, God. <laughs> and then we got season three, chapter three. He was all right. The thing that I really enjoyed about it is Amy. Amy was a pretty cool character. I enjoyed her a lot. I love how the scientist said that she keeps calling me daddy. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> I love it. I will never forget that. And that's season four, chapter three happened. That's when the story was like, it, the story was like this at the start. Woo, woo, woo. And then this right here is season four, chapter three. Woo. Yeah. I, I liked it up until Fractured. Yeah, the issue with, uh, that that's exactly the issue. Fractured. Fractured happened. All of the things we did at the storyline quest of that season, it didn't matter. It was like Midas says, device, they talked about it. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. The loop breaker, nothing. What else happened? Just something completely random. We had no clue about. Nobody had any idea. Nothing in the story even teased it. The map just went kaboom, which was pretty cool. And the camping rusher, and the the camping rusher spoiled me. His thumbnail was the map exploding. I was like, I'm gonna smack you. How dare you, <laughs> leak? How dare you make that your thumbnail? Never do that again. I yeah. will never forget that day. But I don't even blame him. I blame Epic Games. I think they should do something about people who leak. Yeah, probably. That's how I feel about it personally. For sure. I agree. And then, yeah, Fracture was just extremely down bad. I really love Chapter 4 because the first season of it, I say the story was really good. It was slow. It only had four parts. 
but the writing was really good and the offbound the art direction of offbound amy starting to have personality herself and we get to know her more stellan stellan was such a cool character so much personality the shapeless man and everything it was so well done the briefcase was so cool looking but then season two chapter four happened and it was like everything was like <laughs> pew, 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 pew. And then the plane was just crashing i was like Dude, it's, uh, it's so sad because it had so much potential, Chapter 4, Season 1. It looked yeah. like the storyline was going to be so good, and then it was just... Oh, for sure. It was just the Mega City season. Yeah, the season season 1 storyline was good. There was Absolutely. no payoff. That's the issue. There was just no payoff, and it sucked so much. Mega was a good season, don't get me wrong. The gameplay, Mega City. I will praise Mega City any day. <laughs> but the storyline was like... It was cool. Like, Nux was really cool. It was... This is my issue. Since that day, since that season, they have had a pattern for seasons that they want to... They don't want to put too much love into their story. So it starts with, Hey, Looper, how are you doing? Do you know me? It's fine. Don't care about it. I'm gonna not tell you who I am. Nothing about it. But remember this. We need to become friends. Go find people. Bring them to me. We need to unite. We need to become <laughs> friends. So go to the Unseen, go to the Luminaries, go to, I don't know, that other guy, the Water water Lovers River Guard. And that was basically the story of that season. They should have focused on Nux instead. Nux was the coolest part of that season. All of his story was told off screen. Yeah. Not off screen, sorry. There was no, like, explanation. It was just doing things. The Kato and Thorns style. To... Yeah, exactly. Kato Force was way worse. Kato Force was like, <laughs> he was done <laughs> Dirty. Way worse than anyone else. I feel bad for him. I'm gonna get into him. Season 3 happened. Season 3 also still was like, again, bringing back hope for the story because the jungle was cool. An original storyline character was back. Dr. Stone, one of the most loved characters in this game. We were all like, okay, last season kind of sucked. This one. This one <laughs> might bring it back. And it felt like it was, it did it way worse than season one. It, 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 the story was not as cool as season one, but still it was pretty mysterious and interesting. The summer event ruined it in the middle, but they tried to get it back up. And then season four happened, yet again, the exact same issue with season one, chapter four. The build up that those seasons made sounded pretty cool. The execution, the end of like what you get out of the build up, garbage, disgusting. Season 4, Chapter 4 was way worse than Season 2, Chapter 4. Not gameplay-wise. Really fun gameplay. Mm. But story? Hey, you <laughs> there. We need to build a team to get the time machine. Go make friends. Go to talk to this, like, thick fishy. He has, like, addiction to slap juice. Go help him with that. Oh, he gets angry that Kato Force bought slap juice factory or something. Oh, go help this fa hacker. Oh, they're homeless. What help them get a homeless. Uh, you had to like make friends with the the high team to well, bring them together. Are they your friends? Um, no, I killed all of them. <laughs> oh, perfect. They made me mad. <laughs> they pissed me <laughs> off. And then I was like, "Oh, do you see this guy? This, who was their name? Uh, Piper. Piper, go sell her pizza and go to a date night with her. That actually happened. That that actually happened. I'm not kidding. What about Bark go Bark? Oh god, don't remind me. <laughs> I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna get into it. Just wait. So yeah, they repeated the same way of storytelling in that season again, but it doesn't end there. Season chapter five starts. Cha I, I don't care about OG. OG was so weird. I don't I'm not gonna talk about it. Story this guy hates OG Fortnite. I do. I do. Now at I, least I, they could I make you know what I make I make fun of everybody who is just like blinded by nostal nostalgia can believe. It doesn't change the fact that OG was still good. I it was maybe good gameplay wise, but the story was extremely disappointing. They could have done so much. Yeah. They could have done so much story wise. Go through like the old characters, maybe say something new about them every season. Uh, rather than that, they just were like, oh, Ice King's Castle, <laughs> they even made it in. Oh, the monster, they even made it in. It still is on the Ice Moon. Oh, the Fire King, don't worry, he's also still on the Ice Moon. I'm like, <laughs> you just keep removing the cool parts of Chapter 1. What is left it had, anymore? It had so much potential, dude. So much. Yeah. But they That's didn't do why it. I hate that season. I'm like, 
Oh god, they could have they could have cooked really hard, but I, get I was trying to give it. I I had hope that they're gonna do something cool with it, but they didn't. They definitely. It was like the most basic way you could do an OG season, in my opinion. Yeah, I get that. Oh, and then chapter five happens. We were like, okay, Fortnite, you have been letting me go for too long. Big Bang, you said that Big Bang is gonna be one of the best live events ever. Garbage, garbage. <laughs> it was just an ad. The only cool part was the the omniverse happening, the Big Bang. That was pretty cool. Getting to see how the omniverse was created. Everything else garbage. Eminem deserved way more love than he got there. <laughs> Eminem should have been like Trav Scott. Way better. That was not good. That just sucked. It sucked so much. But yeah, uh, season one of that uh, chapter started, it had basically zero storyline. I was like, it's fine. It's fine. Give them some chance. Charlie, man, let him cook. A Greek season is coming. He's going to cook. A Greek season It's going to be one of the best seasons of all time. It's going to become my number one most favorite season ever. It even got Midas in it. How could it go wrong? You have Midas? You have Greek season? Impossible. There is no way you can ruin it. <laughs> oh boy i was wrong oh boy, i, I like was... the way they handled it at the very beginning though the first two weeks no complaints first two weeks were pretty cool for sure no the first two weeks i was going crazy about how cool it was but after that yeah oh then they God. were all like all right all right i'll see you later i'll see you later <laughs> oh. we're gonna get on a boat and we're out of here yeah, it was, it was like Professor Lore. Yeah, that was when I got depressed and I started hating the game. <laughs> but season three saved me, but I'm going to get there. But let's talk about why I hate that season so much. And I say that that's the worst storyline season in the history of this game. I'm going to explain why. So, the season starts pretty cool. I have one issue, the design of the gods, the surveys were way better. The gods look like, I don't know, one of them is a tennis player. The other one, I don't know what's going on with her, but yeah. Zeus, why are you wearing camo pants? Zeus, are you okay? Do you need some help? He needs why some do you have grenades on you? I don't get it. I, it's so dumb. Have you seen his, uh, Zeus's concept design? Yeah. Or no? It looks so and much better. It looks so much better. I don't know who in Epic chooses to change the designs. Throw them out. Let me let me throw them in the sixth reality. Don't it's worry. It's probably I will do it for Tim you. Sweeney. Because he hates everybody so much and hates player base he's and hates the us. Evil. He is the nothing. Team Sweeney is the nothing. <laughs> I solved the storyline. He wants to get rid of the storyline. He wants to destroy all of the realities. Oh, he's going to yes. cook. Excuse me. Oh, God. And then, now let's talk about the actual issues of the season. So, the first week, the way they did Oracle was pretty awesome. You talked to her with that, like, circle water thing. I thought that was really awesome. The way it was like the system, the way it worked, it was really unique. It was better than just audio happening. The interaction was awesome. But then week two happened. Also really cool. Midas entrance. Of course I'm gonna go crazy. It's Midas and the skin they made on him. God, that skin is so yeah, good. Yeah, it's really clean. They completely recreated his model. It's not a reuse. His teeth, his skin, his hair, everything is just remade. It's just so good. And he has a crown. He finally is going to be a king again. <laughs> I've been waiting for that for so long. And then he sails off. Oh, exactly. exactly. <laughs> the only cool story they told them, two cool stories. The only two cool stories they told about Midas that season, it was how good he is at tricking people to the point that he managed to escape from the underworld itself and Hades, which was pretty awesome. Then the other cool story they told was how he killed Jews accidentally, turning her into gold, so he had to do a great sacrifice to make her be alive again. Which I really think that great sacrifice probably was selling his own soul. Because in stories, it's always like a soul for a soul. So he did that. And when he died and escaped, he probably now has his soul back after like years. But I'm like, okay, those were pretty cool. What else? Is there anything else? I mean, Midas is back. This is a huge moment for the storyline community. This is what everybody has been begging for for two years or something. Tell me by the story. Epic? Um, Epic, why are you saying he's leaving? Epic, can you please make Midas kill Zeus? They want to make you well, suffer. Epic? Epic, where is he going? <laughs> Epic? 
Why is this yacht turning about? Epic, stop! No! no! What are you doing? <laughs> and yeah, he just left. He just left. He didn't like me. He ran away from me. How but, dare he? But, but <laughs> look at it this way. They made the greatest season of all time. After that. That's what they led into. Wrecked. Um... I mean, yeah, I mean, it started amazing, and the storyline was good. The storyline, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm, lie, was really good. I'm just good. messing with you. I just, I yeah. can already feel people typing in the comments. Like, actually, that season was pretty terrible. The cars, <laughs> the cars were so bad. I'm gonna beat you. Never say the cars were bad. I oh, will you get heard that it here. Car. You heard it here. It's a personal threat from Cyan. Yes, he's gonna come right threat. at you. I will get that car in real life, and I will find you with that car in real life. Be careful. <laughs> and you're going to give him a big hug, right? Yeah, I will give him a really big hug with the car itself. <laughs> Perfect. So if anybody wants to get hugged by a car, science, your guy, just hate Fortnite Wrecked. Yes. Yes. No, no don't, don't hate it. No, no, you, you, don't wanna, you don't want that to happen. Never mind. Don't hate on it. But yeah, right, so yeah, that's just what happened. <laughs> what? Why you say it like that? No. <laughs> well, I don't know. That's what you were alluding to. Sus. Uh, yeah, so like... That season was like Midas I was pretty excited for, but I, I'm not super mad about that he left so early just because they were like, okay, we just want to explain that he's back and how. And they said that there is a really big storyline arc waiting to happen for Midas. So that was just the intro. They're cooking something for him. So I was like, sure, I guess I wait. That's fine. And... Something that made me really hype. They said that he's living to a world much bigger than this place. So it seems like he's going back to being a king again. In I his really home hope world. that's open world. Yeah, same. I really think that's open world. Hopefully it's going to be the case. I don't know. It might be too early for it. I, I They've been working on open world for four or five years now. It's probably time now. I don't yeah, know how I mean, much longer. Possible. Yeah, hopefully it happens. And then so... That made me, that was, I was like, okay, okay, I'm still not going to hate on this season. They said that Midas is going to be back. And if it's part of the open world, why would I complain? I've been talking about <laughs> open world before anyone else. Four years of yapping about open world, of course I would be hype. But then, that's exactly when the storyline did like a 360 in the Greek season. Hello, hero. Go Go talk to Cerberus, and then Cerberus is like, good doggy. Go find my dog balls. He bark, says bark. that in the storyline. Bark, bark, woof, woof, my ball. He says that in the storyline. <laughs> he says all of those. I'm not making anything up. And then, not just that. Hello, hero. Do you see that banana? He's homeless. Go find him a home. <laughs> bark, bark, woof, woof, my balls. <laughs> You don't do that in a Greek season. You, you do it, do it in wrecked. Do it in wrecked. You don't do that in a Greek season. Greek season happens once, only once. I mean, you so know, Cerberus, god of the Greek balls. Cerberus, god of the Greek balls. That actually sounds really nice. Yeah, it is. He's <laughs> the Greek. <laughs> is that why Aphrodite likes her or something? I don't know. What about, what about Aphrodite? <laughs> she's got, she's got nuts. What's going on? <laughs> no, no, no. That's not what I mean. He's Aphrodite's dog. What do you mean? <laughs> no, not Aphrodite. What am I saying? That Se Se Sephiroth? No, not Sephiroth. What am Sephiroth? I saying? Was... No, no, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> what am I saying? What was her name? The Hades wife. Um, Hades wife. Ogaf. Uh, Ogaf. Wait, what? No, 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 no. Give me a second. Oh, Hello, sorry. Hades. It's... What was your wife's name? Hades. Oh, Persephone, Persephone, there we go. I don't yeah. think it was that. Yeah, it's Persephone. Per no. per per Persephone. No, uh, I, think it was, I, I think it was... Uh, I'm Prophesy Lore. Wait, what? The I'm... Imagine with Hades? <laughs> <laughs> Jeno is gonna go after Hades and just gonna kill him. <laughs> Poor guy. Anyways, continue. Yep, so that season was like bark, bark, woof, woof, and then we got go find this banana, his house, and then it was like... It repeated that Zeus is bad, we must kill him 20 times. And it also did the exact same storyline as Mega and Chapter 4 Season 4. Hello, this guy. Go make friends. Go talk to these gods like Artemis. Go talk to uh, Paris, not Persephone, she wasn't even there. Go talk to Aphrodite, make friends with them. So they help you fight Zeus. 
stop it. <laughs> Never do this storyline ever again. I don't want to make friends. I want to be lonely. I don't need gods to be with me to fight Zeus. I will fight him myself if I have to. Stop it. Please. For the love of God, <laughs> never do a storyline like this. And never also make me kill villains in the storyline quest. That's also extremely lame. What are That's you talking about? Worse. That's peak what storytelling. Kato Force, you just go in there, you just grab a rifle, just brrr. Oh, he died. Let's go. <laughs> Woohoo. Good Dude, you job. You remember first uh, hearing about that? <laughs> Like, the community of Shale was the first time we heard about that Kato Thor take it off. I think that was probably when everybody was like, okay, the storyline is dead. There is no yeah. point to follow it anymore. Yeah. I think that's probably... For me, it was the Greek season. For me, the Greek season was like, okay, the storyline is dead. I need to move on. But then they fixed it. But then this Charlie was like, oh, God, no, we're losing Cyan. Oh, wait, our biggest... Support, our big God, we're losing Professor Lord. <laughs> you cannot do that. No, wait. Wait, go back to the kitchen. So they went back to the kitchen. They made Megalodon. They made him voice signs. They made they gave Hope actual story. They gave her voice signs. Pandora's box was being like the things about it. The Wanderer. The Wanderer was probably why that season was so awesome. Yeah, it was good. It was well done. Yeah, and everything. That season, it had one issue, I would say. Two issues, not two issues. One of uh, them The was cars like a... and the casuals? How dare you? Listen, as the leader of the casual community, oh! if you hate on any of the casuals, I will come to your house and I will grab your car and I will put mods on it. And you have to go around with that car and you, you can do nothing else in your entire life. That's the only thing you can do He's from got some now nitro. On. Give him some nitro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to also give him like the Megalodon mask and put like nitro breathing. <laughs> He's going to be like... Ooh, how does like how does he say it? I don't know. It's like I don't know. I can't do it. Oh, that was... <laughs> All right, uh, let me pause like... you for a second. And so, yeah. we are back. Sorry about that, everybody. Professor Lore has arrived once again to teach you and make you believe <laughs> in the five realities. So, anyway, so yeah, season three, chapter five. It brought back the storyline community slowly. It was like okay, there, uh, an actual genuine storyline is being told again. There is a lot of voice signs. It feels good. I have one issue. They made four different parts of the storyline to find the golden orbs of Pandora's box. Again, this is another issue with the storyline quest that they sometimes do. I don't need four different parts. Make two parts. Make the first one, I find the first orb. And the second one, I find the last orb. We got Jones and Hope. Hope finds the third one and Jones finds the fourth one. I don't need to do all of the work. <laughs> make them do something. Stop them from being so lazy. Yeah. Hope, stop <laughs> painting on the wall and do something. Did you see she painted on the toenail of like the Greek Titan yeah. statue? <laughs> she goes to do that rather than finding the balls. How dare you? She's the opposite of Cerberus. <laughs> yeah. She doesn't like balls. Well, Epic Games Epic Games did hear us loud and clear. They didn't want us to talk about any finding balls anymore, so they had her painting. Yeah, if she was like, okay, I'm just gonna go paint. I, you, you go find the balls, I go do the painting. <laughs> Epic just loves balls, I swear. Zero <laughs> point, these, and Cerberus, they just love it. So yeah, it was like, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, yeah, so it was like four different parts of finding balls. You don't need to do that. Two, and the other two, talk about Hope's connection to Pandora's box or talk about the origin of Megalodon. These are the things Fortnite needs to do more in the storyline. Talk about the explained things. Like, in the Greek season, you should have told me the origin of the Greek gods. Why did the Titans lock them up in the box? Why did the Titans and the gods before that create this box to put this magic inside of it? What exactly happened at that moment? Why exactly does Zeus think the only way to, like, uh, the, like fix the horrible future coming for is is like to kill all of the mortals. How was he planning to do that? I just figured out how he was planning to do that, but that's a bad thing. Two seasons after finding out exactly what Zeus was trying to do, that's terrible storytelling. So this is what I figured out. Zeus in the live events was trying to unlock a power inside of Pandora's box that you need in order to like kind of have some of the box's powers, not all of it, because all of it would take control of you. You would only need some of it. So 
he does the lightning strikes into the box that are needed to like release that power and that power gets released but doom at the same time was coming towards the island and he already had something with him that attracted that power into himself so rather than the power going vault and zeus consuming it the power just started jumping towards doom instead because he kind of called upon it so zeus's whole plan was to get that power and kill all of us but what did doom what doom did cause him to fail that's why zeus failed but they told the story so bad i had to do so much research to find this out that's not a good yeah, thing. Yeah, that's that's kind of where the Fortnite storyline suffers nowadays sometimes is uh the, exactly. it's a little bit difficult to get a hold of, right? Yeah. Like wow. for Professor Lore to take him two seasons to figure that out. That's not good. <laughs> that's a I mean, I think at least they're they seem to be really getting back on track right now. Yeah, hopefully. This yeah, let's talk about this season now. Oh my god. Oh my god. I did not expect such a gold such a masterpiece out of such a terrible chapter story-wise oh <laughs> my god it's so good it's like it's just perfect it's, i would say this is top three best storyline seasons of all time wow the level of how good this is it's insane first of all connecting it to be the rest of zero war storyline that's exactly what we need tell the rest of the story don't just make it feel random like, I don't know, the Greek gods just appear. Uh, Megalodon just appear. Uh, society just appear. Uh, Mega City just appear. That, that's, that's bad. But this isn't... It was easy to understand. They made it really understandable that, okay, all of the characters from Zero War have returned. This is the rest of the Zero War storyline. Shuri is here. The love of Jones, they get to be together again and all of that. Amazing start. Right there. Great job. Just awesome. Telling the rest of the story we've been waiting for. And then they didn't just tell it. They cooked so hard. This is some of the most emotional story. The writing is insane. Uh, Megan did the writing. And she just cooked. It's so good. I Basically, really, why... really, really loved that cinematic they recently just did. Oh, yeah. The cinematic is one Lazy. of their best, I would say. One of their best. Like, <laughs> oh, I agree. Like, if you're not too much in the story into, like, following stories, you would not get all of the secrets inside of that, like, uh, any cinematic. They didn't talk, but the animations on the faces, the way that the characters acted, it was trying to tell you the story without talking. It was, the, it was like, show, don't tell. Exactly, it was trying to do that. And that's what's so amazing. beautiful about their storytelling sometimes, eh? Yeah, exactly. It was like... You see uh, Doom coming in unbothered about anything. He's too lazy to even try. <laughs> uh, War Machine comes in front of him like fly, shoo, bam. He don't, <laughs> did you see how like lazily he did it too? Yeah. He was just like, bam. <laughs> Out of he here. sees like people around him. He just like slowly brought, brings up his hand, bam, bam. You could like feel how careless he was. How mm. like he sees all of us as insects. You could actually feel it. Which is why... Like, I feel like Fortnite is, like, putting love into the storyline again. Because yes. to reach this level of storytelling, you need to, like, put your heart into it. Which mm -hmm. makes me feel like, okay, the storyline is definitely back. And then Jones throwing the shield at him. Jones always, like, even when he's weak, he always tries to do the right thing. He's always just like that. Hope is really similar to him, actually. So... And also Jones did that because if you guys didn't know, Jones and Dr. Doom had a big interaction in the Zero War comics. They had a fight and everything. So Jones throwing that was definitely because of that fight too. Because <laughs> he hurt Jones really badly in yeah. that comic. He was about to kill Jones. So this is the second time he was about to kill Jones. I didn't even think about that. Mm. Damn. I like that they kind of like uh, took our expectations. Everybody was talking about Jones dying and they just switched it on yeah. us. I like that he kind of got saved. Yeah, exactly. That's one another thing I loved about this live event. Everything that happened in it was built up. Uh, Dr. Doom's mask breaking, it was teased as the first week of this season. Mm -hmm. Jones dying, it was teased by Oracle. It was teased by some other things too. Mm -hmm. What else? There was some more. Uh, Hope, Hope, uh, hand burning, 
I predicted that it was teased by her, by her new skin. The hand was like covered with a sleeve. They were trying to tease you that something is going to happen to this hand. And I was like, it's going to burn. She's covering to heal it. I love it. And then the, yeah. And then I also said another thing I predicted. I said that they're making Hope scared and everything because, and they're teasing that Jones is going to get hurt. Because that's how she's going to finally believe in herself. She's going to be forced to doing it. Because if she doesn't believe in herself, then the cause is going to be the death of her friends. So she pushes herself into be like, okay, I'm going to get a hang of myself. I'm not going to panic anymore. If I do, my friend is going to die. Huh. That's such a good cinematic. Yeah. I agree. Man, whoever writes that cinematic, whoever <laughs> did those... Please, every season, Dude, make so them good. do that story. So good. And then, like, something I want to talk about, Hope, too. I still think that Hope's design needs to change. I don't agree with the way the character is designed. I say that they should have made it so every season that ended, something about that season got added into her design. So season one ended, a society piece added to her. Season two ended, something from Zeus's design added into her. Season three, something from Megalodon. Mm. To make her design have meaning into itself, just like Jones. Do you remember how Jones did that in yeah. season five? Yeah, like, you know they what? Needed I, to do that. I wouldn't personally mind it if uh, they. I just completely lost my train of thought. I was going to say something oh. about hope. I'm so sorry. I wouldn't <laughs> no, mind fine. it if. Uh, oh, like a lot of people might like that they did it. That they're kind of like chapter consistent. Yeah, and I wouldn't mind it if like it, it meant a little bit more personally. Yeah, exactly. It's like they should have. That's. I think the design of Hope is one of the biggest issues we've heard. That at the start made people be like, "Eh." There are some other issues too, because like in the first two seasons, the storyline was terrible. But in the last two seasons, three and four, she's finally feeling like an amazing character. Yeah. But her design still needs to be fixed, in my opinion. It needs to have meaning to it, just like Jones. I Jones I don't all... mind Hope personally. I think it's an okay design. But I get is, I get but... what you mean. Yeah, it's like, it feels like an item shop skin. It doesn't feel like a storyline <laughs> skin. Do you, do you get what I mean? I understand what you mean, but it's probably because we haven't been with her long enough. We haven't, like, built that same John Jones connection. But there's a million Jonesies in the yeah. item shop. Yeah, but Jones, I mean, like, when his actual storyline happened, like, his beginning of his true storyline was in Season 5, Chapter 2. In the same season, in that one single season, they made an entire new skin with lots mm -hmm. of, like, like, personalities into it. Hope could exactly do the same thing. She had four seasons to do that, not just one. Well, and it was they yeah. always could just change her with like as time goes on. Like she just could get keep getting more armor or something. I don't know. And then that, oh, yeah. that and if that's the case, then I think it'd be really cool. It's just like base regular style, and then as the chapters go on, she continues to get even cooler. Oh yeah, for sure. But like I'm saying that they're being they were too slow with it for sure. Like the speed in which you tell a story matters too, because like. There is a lot of like uh, elements that make a good story. Yeah. You could say that in one year, Hope is going to be like that, but that's not going to be good. She needs to be like that from the start. Jones mm -hmm. was like Jones was like that from the start. My just from the start had an extremely meaningful design to him. The foundation did. Dr. Sloan did. She just felt like a girl who was like, I'm a mm -hmm. fashion clothes and woohoo, <laughs> wiki. <laughs> I was like, nah, that's not it. I don't like that design. But it's yeah. fine. Hopefully, they still do some crazy designs. She's the only one that they kind of flop with. Yeah, I, I then, like I said, I get what you mean. Yeah. And then it's like, but her story, though, this season, in the Doom season, they gave her so much mm -hmm. personality. The fact that, okay, I don't know if you know this full story about her, but I'm going to tell you, and then tell me how you feel about it. Okay. So Hope's story from last season is that Pandora's box has been calling up into her. There is Dr. Doom coming to grab his energy, and the box is scared. The box is like, okay, no, I want Hope to get me, not Dr. Doom. The box talks to Hope. She gets headaches out of it because the box tries to manipulate your head, try to get into your head and kind of take control of you. This box is like filled with the biggest evils of the world. Mm -hmm. So you should never trust it. <laughs> and 
basically the box told her i will give you everything you want i will give you peace i will give you harmony i will make the world exactly how you want it to be you just have to find me and get my energy and huh. she was really close to falling for it she was like right she was actually searching for it that's why we went to find the balls but jones <laughs> yeah it's always about the balls <laughs> it's always about the balls but jones was like right there came she was like he was like stop don't do that. I was really into the zero point back then. I was stuck into the zero point and I learned how horrible power luck that can be. It changes you. It either destroys you or it makes you become evil. Mm -hmm. One of those two. There is no other option. So he thankfully managed to change Hope's mind, stop her from going for the box's power because like he said that this is basically like the zero point. You go for it you are it's not gonna end well for you at mm -hmm. all and when that happened uh now there is another issue now because of that she feels extremely powerless she feels weak she's like oh, look at these people they either got cool powers they either got cool suits or they can build technologies mm -hmm. like shuri what can i do i'm just a girl with a spray <laughs> that's it which is a good really good story to tell like it makes me like not hate how like kind of uh not fight like she is she yeah. is like just a normal girl mm -hmm. now it actually makes sense why they made her like that yeah and I, like i said i like how they're they're starting to develop her because she could turn into like a really really badass character yeah, exactly. if, if not kind of already you know what i mean yeah, she is already. They just need to fix the design. That's it. <laughs> Only the design is the issue right now. A lot of they people like the design it... though still. I it's not bad. Yeah, but like for the main character of your story, you should go harder. Yeah. Honestly, like if it was a side character, I would have had no issues. But it's the main character of your story. You got to go crazy with that. <laughs> just like you did with the foundation. I get that. So she is like all of the things she feels weak and everything. And then Oracle suddenly out of nowhere comes and she's like, Jones, it doesn't work like that. The Pandora's box is talking to her. To anyone else, <laughs> it would destroy them. And that she is probably the chosen hope chosen by Pandora's box. And then Jones is like, okay, okay, sure. Whatever you want to say, but I warned you, which is part of a fury I'm cooking on right now. It's a really good fury. Interesting. Yeah, you were so, telling me you were telling me you have a theory like ready lined up I and have ready two. to go. Ah, too. Yeah, you gotta like them. All right, so, so hang on, hang on. Let me let me let me incentivize people to go over there because, of course, guys, and anybody can check out if for if for whatever reason you're not already subscribed to Professor Lore, you can find it in the pinned comment description down below. This video Professor should be coming Lore. out in two days from the time that we're recording this. Cyan, when is your yes. when is your thoughts on like uploading those videos for people to go check out? Because that way I could try and link it. The first one is already out, but I'm gonna just like. Oh, I thought you were talking it. about a new new theory. Oh, the the second one is the new one, oh, but the first okay, one I want to okay. tell you too because it's a really good theory. All right. The second one though, it comes in, I would say a day after you upload, probably. Okay. Cool. Cool. A so if, if anybody's watching us right now, you might already be able to go over Science Channel, check that out. Regardless, like I said, the links will be in the pinned comment description down below. And probably and, Profes and Cyan, promote your code while you're at it. My quote? Oh my god, thank you. Okay. <laughs> my code is five realities. I'm joking. It's Cyan. S-C-Y-A-N. Thank you so much. Legend. Yeah. I wonder if anybody used five realities just to... Like, How dare they? Who think that. <laughs> Anyways, continue. Uh, yeah, so Hope is like she's powerless on everything. And then Oracle out of nowhere comes like, okay, Jones, it doesn't work like that way. The box has chosen Hope and probably there's a reason for it. And I was back then, I was like... Ah, Oracle, I don't know about that. Jones is pretty right about what he's saying right now. And then uh, the Doctor Doom season starts. It's going like that. Okay, Hope is not going for the bug still because she's listening to Jones, but she feels horrible. Like, how am I supposed to defeat Doom? How? Yeah. Why was I the chosen one? I'm just a normal girl. This is a <laughs> really good story to tell. But then Jones is like, okay, listen. I know you don't believe in yourself, but I'm basically just like you. You have a fire in yourself, inside of you, which makes you be a good leader, which makes you do the right thing. You don't see it right now, but that thing is exactly what makes you be the chosen one. You're not special because of any power or anything. You're special because you're trying to save your friends. You're trying to protect them. You're trying to do the right thing. But like hope again is like, 
okay, that power, yeah, sure, but I'm fighting Doom. Who, why? How? How is he gonna care that I, I have flames in me? He's gonna, he's gonna <laughs> eat the flame. He's, he was about to eat the flame. He just like grabbed the girl. And I was like, girl. I actually laughed God. at that when that first happened too. <laughs> it he was just so grabbed funny. her. I was like, huh? <laughs> There, there is meaning to that too. Everything in that cutscene had meaning, which is pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna talk about that so you you understand too, because a lot of people don't know why he did that. Uh, so, oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, the so the things happen. She's not feeling herself. She actually panics events. So I don't know if you heard this, but Doctor Doom was coming towards the island before the live event happened, and she was basically panicking. Yeah. She was screaming. She was feeling horrible. And then Oracle came in like, excellent. I swear she's evil. I swear Oracle is evil. I know you evil. think that. That's that's a toughie to believe so far. That'd be one hell of a twist if they ever ended up yeah. doing that. That'd be one heck of a twist. And that'd be like, Sai, props to you. I don't think she's fully evil, but I think she's hiding something from us. I think that something terrible is okay, going to happen. Okay, hang on, hang on. That's different than being evil. <laughs> yeah. Evil, I mean that she's just the way she talks. I'm like, oh, you monster, but you being good. She's suffering. <laughs> but yeah, I do feel like she's like hiding something from Jones and Hope that is like, there's a horrible sacrifice they're going to make. There's a horrible event coming up that if they know about, they might not fight Doom anymore. There's something that they might not do, which is going to be horrible for humanity. And uh, that'd be a good way I to get rid of Jones, have Jones sacrifice himself. I hope not. Uh, don't sacrifice himself. I will go get his reboot card and I will reboot him. Don't worry, guys. I got you. Probably yeah, Professor Lore, got Lore you. back into the uh, Fortnite storyline for real. I'm gonna be tier 100. I'm gonna be <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm gonna be the new. I'm gonna be the new Geno. I'm gonna create like the new Oof. Imagine Order, the Five Realities Order. There you go. That's the name. And then you're gonna kill your daughter. Yes, exactly. I'm gonna <laughs> throw her into the zero points. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, Cyan, yes. we are approaching your time limit right now. Oh yeah, true. We have... We, oh god. We might need to do a part three of this. Oh yeah, for sure. That would be funny. That would because, be really funny. Hang on, hang on. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 questions I wanted to ask you. Okay, speed We got it. through two. <laughs> Speedrun it, it's fine, speedrun it. <laughs> no, 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 we don't have to speedrun it. If you ever have time again, we can do that. Yeah, I know you're on a time limit. I don't want to, I'm not keeping you past that. Don't worry. I want to respect that. This was fantastic. Take a look at the Fortnite storyline, yeah. talk about the Fortnite storyline. So yeah, I'm sorry to cut you off there, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to be that guy. No, it's all fine, don't worry. So, Cyan, if anybody yes. wants to continue to get to know Cyan, by the way, looks like we will have another part down the line. Which, I'm going to keep these list of questions because they're really good. Talk about the Fortnite storyline. I'm sure Cyan's happy to talk about the Fortnite storyline. Cyan? Of course, always. Any closing remarks? I should probably sell the the Fury thing before I go, probably. Oh, I didn't think you wanted to share that here. If you want to share that for your own video. Oh, of course I want to. Go. Oh, yeah, I told okay, you I want to okay. share it. I told you I want to share it before the video comes. Okay, I, listen. I thought you meant in your own video. Nah, -uh, I, I told you in DMs I want to share it right, to you. All right, okay, hit listen, me, hit me, listen. hit me. Your brain is gonna explode. Are you ready? This is one of the best theories I've made. So chapter four. What did Donna Mustard say about chapter four? Do are you, you remember? Are you talking about like that it was supposed to be part of chapter three? No, 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 no. Like he, he tweeted something right when chapter four happened. Do you oh. remember that? No. He said how this is like the closest to early Imagine Order. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I remember that. So basically... Chapter 4 was somewhat trying to show the origin of the Imagine Order, where Geno is from, how he started and everything. Aegis is trying to like be like a way for us to see the origin of Geno. And Chapter 5! Guess what I'm gonna say about what Chapter 5 is about. Let's see if you know. What Chapter 5 is about? Like, in yeah, relation like to what Donald what... Mustard said? Yes. You I, know. I can't you relate that to I'm what cooking. Donald Mustard said. Okay, chapter let me five seems this to be is why... thing. This is why you're not Professor Lord. Let me <laughs> Chapter 4 was the origin. Chapter 5 is the new world order. It's the new Imagine Order beginning to be created. So Wait, what's that let to me do explain. with this tweet? Let me, let me see. Let me All see. Right. Okay. No, I mean, like, that's the start. That's where I'm like, so the old IO got destroyed. In Chapter 4, we got to see the, like, the origin of the IO. And in Chapter 5... We're now beginning to see, like, the creation of the new. How exactly? 
let me talk to you about this. Season 1, we had the society, right? It was pretty similar to the Imagine Order, right? Yeah. It was pretty much the same. Uh, Valeria, would you say that she's extremely similar to Geno? I don't know. I guess so. She's like constantly chasing power. She was. She wanted to know all of the knowledge out there. She was chasing yeah, to find the zero point. Yeah, that could be true. Seems a little bit. Uh, she's not as significant as Geno, but I get what you're saying. Yeah, she is. I'm. I'm. I, she. I'm not saying that she is a new Geno. You're gonna hear what I mean. And she's also had an extremely similar design to Geno as her first like uh, survey design. Her red colors were the silver, the exact same silver that Geno had. But now let's keep going. Bounty you. Is it the like the 2.0 Midas, yep. right? And Midas was one of the big bosses of Imagine Order, if you don't know that. Yeah. He was like one of the big guys. He did all the funding for the faction. All of the gold was his. He was one of the biggest reasons why the faction got even to be created. Okay, those two were there. Season 2, we got Zeus. So Zeus, he had a kingdom. He tried to protect his kingdom. The kingdom is kingdom is destroyed now. He's not a king anymore. And he lost his immortality. And he uh, like a random medic saved him. Which means that there's more story coming with him. Okay. Who's like I'm gonna ask you this question. Who's the guy, the genetic science, who knows how to make you immortal? Who is it? <laughs> you talking about Geno? Yes. You think Geno's yes. coming back still, eh? Yes. And then, like, <laughs> Zeus <laughs> sorry, is not going to stay. I, Zeus is not going to stay without being not immortal. Trust me. That's, I, no. Sorry, I, I'm not laughing at your theory. I'm laughing like, uh, <laughs> right now you're laughing. Like, uh, you know how you can't, see, for context, Cyan can't see me right now, but I can see him. Yeah. And I see him, like, like, <laughs> twiddling his fingers like a super villain like i got the lore figured out right now <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> so oh my god <laughs> so yeah um the guy who knows how to make you immortal you know you know and now it keeps going it keeps going who was the guy that said people said it's gunner who is it gunner what do you mean the guy uh, do you know gunner from yeah. uh, the yeah, imagine yeah. order People said that someone in this chapter is. Oh gunner. my God, Cyan, you're ringing a bell. Um, oh, Brutus. No, Megal, Megal, Megalodon. I'm yeah. an idiot. What I was thinking, Brutus? I was thinking Midas, uh, Midas back <laughs> on the <laughs> on the boat. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's okay. Okay, so Megalodon, Megalodon, pretty similar to Gunner. He just lost everything. Doom betrayed him. Yeah. The same person who killed Gunner and the same person who betrayed Geno. So they Geno and Gunner, uh, Megalodon have something in common, but it doesn't enter. He also stole his Nitra and everything. Megalodon is just hiding now. Now, what do you think I'm getting at? Do you have any clue? <sighs> no, I don't. How dare you? Okay, let me explain for you. Do you remember the inner faction of Imagine Order back then? What about the is inner faction? Like, what about the inner part of it? Inner circle, sorry, inner circle. Like the characters? Saying? Yeah, but like the inner circle, basically the idea was all of the bosses of Imagine Order, because people get this wrong. Imagine Order was not just built by Geno. Geno is the leader, but a lot of people helped him create this faction. This faction is massive. It can't be just built by one person. And Midas was one of those people who helped him a lot for creating this faction. So there was an inner circle. Dr. Doom was supposed to join that inner circle. And the inner circle kind of works like the society. Do you know how society had like Oscar, it had uh, Montague, yeah. it had... So all of them were bosses, right? Yep. That would count as the inner circle of society. Okay. It's the same thing that Ayo had. So if Geno wants to create a new Imagine Order, most of the people in the old inner circle betrayed him. Might just betrayed him. Foundation, I feel like, probably was one of them because Foundation was an Ayo worker who betrayed Geno because he felt himself betrayed by Geno. That's why he left. We got all of the... We got her died and things like that. So, if Geno wants to create a new Imagine Order, he needs a new, like, inner circle. People who can support him. Mm. Montague is rich. He can replace Midas in helping fund his things. Wow. Valeria... Valeria can become the new wife instead of whoever was the old wife. <laughs> <Just> forget. <laughs> forget about the old one. And uh, 
Megalodon is gonna become the new gunner. He's gonna become the brute of the faction and everything. And there was another one, right? There was another one. Wait, wait, wait. No, Meowskulls. Yeah, there was. No, Meowskulls. No, no. <laughs> He's with Midas right now. Who was? Oh, Zeus. Zeus. Zeus doesn't have anywhere to go now. He's just his kingdom is done. There's nothing to do, and yeah. he's not immortal anymore. He's gonna join, and these five, along with one more person, which I'm not exactly sure who that one person is for now. These six people create the new inner circle, and they're the beginning of the new order. Mm. They're the beginning of order restored. Do you see it now? Yeah, actually, you know what? It's an out there theory, but it does make sense. It's yeah, very, exactly. very pro. It, it, it's very possible that it could happen, but it is a really, really difficult call to do. It's very specific. Yeah, it is a really hard one to do. But if Fortnite was, ah! any... <laughs> sorry, what P was that? PBJ's what calling was... me. <laughs> PBJ. <laughs> I, PBJ. Sorry if that, like... guys. I'm sorry if that came through and uh, interrupted Sai there. I don't know if the volume is coming through. PBJ. If he's watching this PBJ right now. Is like... No, uh, why are you talking to Sai and talk to me about the lore? <laughs> <laughs> he is a big storyline guy. Yeah, he is. And so sorry, sorry to interrupt you there. No, nah, it's all fine. So yeah, it's like if Fortnite wants to make the storyline impactful, if they want their villains to actually become iconic and respected like Geno, they need to do crazy things like this. Yeah. If they do this, a lot of people are going to fall in love with the storyline. Oh, They're yeah. going to be like, do you remember when Dino Master said everything is connected? Mm -hmm. Do this. I understand. I get that. I get that. I just worry that they're not following Dino Master's plan. No, I mean, I, I do think this is Charlie's plan. I'm saying just like, he's probably trying to also make things connected. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully it's not just one of villains. And the reason why I also say this, I feel like it's beneficial for the villains to also join Geno because like, uh, Montague... Geno could help him reach, have access to every single reality now. And Montague himself wanted to create a perfect society. So doing it together with Geno, why not? And Valeria, I really feel like Geno is going to be like, join me. I will teach you everything about the zero point. And if you know Valeria, she loves to learn yeah. everything about the zero point and so on. That's her thing. And then Megalodon, he got betrayed by Doom. Maybe Doom still is part of the story after this season. Maybe Geno is like, hey, help me. This guy also betrayed me. We're going to kill him together. And also, I'm going to give you back your Nitro. I'm going to also make you stronger, uh. just like you like to be stronger. And, and then we have definitely... Wrecked Part 2. Let's go. Oh, God. <laughs> I mean, actually, yay. Yay. I like the cars. And then Nitro, I think the Nitro Megalodon ha Don has is probably a reason why Geno would like to work with him. I that, that Nitro would be extremely helpful. Zeus, Zeus is the easiest, easiest one to see. Geno is going to be like, you're not immortal like, anymore? Boo-hoo, I'm stronger than you now. <laughs> but you know what? I can make you immortal again. I can make you be the god you used to be. If you work uh, with me to create this perfect society, I mean, sorry, imagine order. I know. There was one more villain. I keep forgetting him. There was one more villain. Who was that? From uh, like the original story? No, from the this chapter. I think I said all of them actually, maybe. Yeah, I thought you did. Zeus. Oh, I said all of them. Okay. So yeah, that's why I think that they're gonna join Geno because it's gonna be a beneficial uh, transaction. Both of them like get something out of it, out of it. Mm -hmm. There you go. That's the fury. I'm gonna that's talk about solid. it more. That's that, I'm not even kidding with you right now. Like I'm not saying that. Like I I actually think it's a solid theory. If you call I it, that'll you. be wild. It would be. It would. They. I would become the new owner of the storyline. You know what? I'll. I'll. I'll bow down and give you praise if you end up calling that one correctly. Oh Lord, Professor Lord. <laughs> oh Lord of the five realities. <laughs> I right. will never. Say we are I officially will never hate. over your time over here. I really. No. I do not want to be that guy and keep you. So we'll do no this more again. No yapping. <laughs> It was, it was really cool, though. I enjoyed talking about the Fortnite storyline. Next time, we'll dive a little bit more into your relationship with the Fortnite storyline as well. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, Thank I agree. Thank you so much for having me. Anything else you'd like to say before we take off here? Okay, yes, yes, yes. Wait, wait, wait. Professor Lore tells you every day, exactly at... No, 5. Exactly at 5 p.m., go praise the five realities <laughs> tell everybody about the five realities be like do you know the five realities how dare you smack them whoever doesn't <laughs> know the five realities smack them start and knocking yeah, on doors 
Yes, exactly. Knock on the doors be like, FBI, open up! Your crime is that you don't, like, praise the five realities. How dare you? And then go find Clark. Go find <laughs> Clark. Make ten screens around him, all playing the three hours long video that I talk about the five realities in it, too. Do that, do that. And tie him to a chair make him watch. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tie him to a chair. Definitely do that. Yeah, because that guy would just walk out. <laughs> don't let him walk out. Lock the <laughs> doors. Put, like, and just don't let him ever come out of that place. Maybe lock the door and turn the lights down low and play Cyan. <laughs> oh, my God. Cyan. He's got to go insane. Thank you so much for coming, dude. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. That was a really, really fun time. I can't believe we're actually going to have to do a part three after that. Guys, I don't know if it was noticeable, but my eyes are on fire right now. And my nose is all stuffy. I have, like, horrible, horrible allergies. It still continue on to the fall. So if any of you are wondering why I perhaps looked a little bit weird, that's, that's why inside. If you happen to be watching this video, I cannot thank you enough for your time. Thank you so, so much, guys. And it looks like... Cyan is not going to be the first person to get a second interview, but we're going to do a third one, guys. If you are interested in checking out the first interview we did, a little bit getting to know more Cyan personally, I would love for you to check it out right here, guys. I will see you over there or in the next video. Take care, everybody.